<laughs> February 14th, 1870, is the day that Frederick Douglass's mother claimed for him to be his birthday. We didn't have birthday cakes on the plantation. We didn't have those things. What we had was masters, overseers, chains, and holes and things that we did work with when we were working for the master. Right? Frederick Douglass's mother was violated by a white man who may have been either her master or the master who was ultimately the master of Frederick Douglass himself. He was not born in love the way two parents give love and bring children into the world. He was born in the violence of slavery. So to give him love in spite of that violence, in spite of that rape, she made him her valentine. And he claimed February 14th for his birthday. And he went on to become the most articulate, famous spokesperson against slavery in the 19th century. Frederick Douglass, we say Ibaye. Ashe! Ashe! Who is this? Frederick Douglass! And I just want to just, just add a little sense of history to it. I was probably some of your ages when Malcolm was killed. In 1965, I was eight years old, living in the city of Newark. And uh, my father, I remember my father having Malcolm's album, which is either the ballad or the bullet, which talked about whether or not you, you, you take a, one route to the struggle for freedom in this country. So many of us, and, I've, and, and I go with, back with Zaid a long time, he talks about uh, when he was maybe doing some things he shouldn't have. But I remember when we were doing boxing in Plainfield, <laughs> and he was running around, he was a good young man. So I don't know that other part of him, but he helped us promote boxing in That's Plainfield. That's after I stole the book. Yeah, after <laughs> you stole the book. But, um, and, and I've been a long time member of Pop. So, Joy Today, the, most, the two critical things I want you to take away from this as you listen to all these historic figures. Number one, Zaid talked to you about how important the library is. And so whether it was Malcolm or whether it was W.E.B. Du Bois, we cannot have freedom without knowledge. And so you should seek it from the cradle to the grave. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Introduce himself. We're very happy that he's here. You see that we're celebrating African History Month, and he is a walking history right here. Let's give a round of applause to the Power to the people, young people. Oh, power power to the people. people. That's what you must see. If you are to be successful, then the whole world must towards freedom. It's an honor to be here. I didn't expect to speak, but I was looking at the pictures on the uh, table here and reflecting that at least half of them I met personally. <laughs> so here at Newton, W.B. DeBarris, I met his wife, sister by the name of Shirley Graham DeBarris, not him. Rosa Parks, I met Malcolm X. I was talking about him for just a few minutes. I first met Malcolm X in late 1959. Most of y'all wasn't born then. I was two. <laughs> so you were two years old. Yes, I was two. <laughs> I met him in Virginia, not New York City. Because he was traveling, spreading the teachings of Mr. Muhammad uh, in the South. He was traveling with another member from Philadelphia by the name of Jeremiah Shabazz. I'll show you a little bit. <laughs> Later on, I met his teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. 
when I met Dr. King, even before I met Malcolm, I first met Dr. King in late 1956, not long after the uh, fair in uh, Montgomery, after, um, in Montgomery, Alabama, uh, uh, after the bus boycott, he was on a national, a national speaking tour. So you just reflect, you know, uh, over the years, the sister talk about Kwanzaa, I was there in Los Angeles when Kwanzaa was founded. Mm. And a member of that organization, <laughs> us. <laughs> so I won't take very much time, we can go on and on, but just to give you some idea that some of us who have been around a long time and involved in the struggle, we do have a lot of information, but it's one thing to read about it, but it's another thing to live it. I've been privileged to have lived it. <laughs> Thank you very yes, much. Sir. Yes. What's going on, Popcorn Kids? And friends and parents, supporters, young sisters and brothers, it is an honor to be here with you today. An honor. And I'm real glad that y'all want to celebrate the birthday of Frederick Douglass. Now, my real name is Larry Ashley. And I, too, I'm a member of the People's Organization of Progress. I'm the vice chairperson. But I wanted to talk to you today somewhat about Frederick Douglass, participate and be the object of your celebration of my birthday, his birthday. So sometimes I'm going to be Larry, sometimes I'm going to be Frederick Douglass. It's up to you to keep up and pay attention because there are prizes. What year is this? What year is it? 2013. When did Papa Zaid say Frederick Douglass was born? What'd you say, sister? What'd he say? 18... 17. It was either 1817 or 1818. It's not clear. He didn't know when his real birthday was because he was a slave. He wasn't cared for, loved, endeared. He was a slave. Anybody know what a slave was? Who answered that question? Who answered that question? Whoa! What little A slave is somebody who's owned by somebody else. Excellent. <laughs> the same way I own this piece of chalk with mm. which to write, Somebody owned Frederick Douglass for whom to work. And everything that he, a slave, earns, works, makes, creates, is owned by someone else. So he or she never then can accumulate anything. It's all taken away. In fact, his very body is taken away. So Frederick Douglass was born in 1817, and this is 2013. How old am I today? If we take today is the day. Little brother back there with the mask over your face. This is a subtraction problem. You subtract 1817 from 2013. Well, how much is it, little sister? Um, I think it is. Seven from six? Seven from 13? Six. One from 10. What do we got to do? Borrow. Turn that to zero. Make that a 10. Take one from 10 and put it up. What's that? 196 years old would be today. And I think, Larry thinks, Frederick Douglass is a major hero. Baba Zaid says Frederick Douglass is a major hero. Maybe after we talk about them, I'm going to ask you what do you all think about Frederick Douglass. He didn't know his birthday. He said the record wasn't kept. He was, but they do know he was born in February of either 1817 or either 1818. And ironically, anybody know what ironically means? I know, I do. What, 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 what? Ironic means like you um, think one and it comes, like it's the opposite of so, the thing. Say like an example, like in modern day life, like if you have a hockey team, say a hockey team that's named, the name is the Bush, New Jersey or something like that. But they had the uniform is a red jersey that's kind of. That's irony. That's an irony. You couldn't tell irony. You want an iron? An ironic? Yeah. Like, one more. One more. Kind of? Kind of, yeah. 
Yeah, it kind of is weird. It's different. It's strange. We do know he died February 20th. Today's the 23rd of 1895. How old was he? 1996. No. He'd be 20, he'd be 196 in 2013. If he was born, if he died in 1895, he was born in 18, we'll say 17. 17 or 18. The record's not clear. What do we do? Borrow? December 15. What did he take away? 78. He was either 77, if he was born in 1817, in 1818, or he was 78 if he was born in, in 17. Yeah, you got it right. Just a man. <laughs> So he lived a long life. And you know what he did with his life? If you're a slave and somebody owns you and owns everything you make, what do you think about, sister? He, he picked cotton from slaves and he thought about he, that's what That's the work he has. Part of the work he has to do. And so Little he, sister? He risked his life. Risked his life for what? He for somebody else. Freedom. For freedom. Not only did he risk his life for freedom as a child, but his whole life. His whole 78 years was spent in one way or another in the fight for freedom and the fight and the fight to who can read this word? Abolish. What does abolish mean? It means when you stop something from happening. There you go. Put an end to it. Put an end to it. And one who abolishes is called in what? Abolish. Abolitionist. <laughs> Put the emphasis on the other syllable. He's an abolitionist. That was his big claim to fame. But he was born as a slave in 1817. And at six years old, he played as a kid. The other kids on the plantation. Owned by Aaron somebody and Colonel Lloyd. Didn't know his mom too much. She was on another plantation. Didn't know his father. Baba Zaid said he was probably a white man who took advantage of his mother because she too was property. Not treated like a human that had say over her own body or her child. This is the life of slavery in the 19th century. And slavery existed in this country from 1619 when the first slaves were brought off a boat from Europe until the end of the Civil War in 1864. 200 and, somebody counted, 54 years. Most Africans, descendants of Africa, African Americans, were slaves. The vast majority, our ancestors here, were somebody else's property and denied the dignity of human life. Control over our own lives. From birth to six, Frederick Douglass was a kid. He went to work at six years old. Those who owned him put him to work at six years old. And his job was to care for a kid about his own age who was the, who was the son of the owner of his plantation and the owner of Frederick Douglass. That instead of being carefree as a child, he could be punished for what he did or didn't do in relationship to somebody else's well-being. Yes, little sis? You want to ask me something? About that? No, I don't that. Huh? You know something that I had said or had? Fill it in. Okay, the slave people took his grandmother. That's right. Had to take care of William Thomas, and we found out that his the the slave owner the, the boy's mother was teaching him how to read. The slave mother stopped there wanting to the, um, the slave. Take up to the other people. The slave owner um, a friend of the other day wanted him to learn how to read, so they tried to talk, stop Tommy's mother from teaching him how to read. Excuse me. Good point. We all have some information. Nobody got it all, so we share. That's right. That's true. That's right. That's right. That's true. And a lesson we learned from Frederick Douglass is to spend your life fighting against slavery. And all of its vestiges. Who knows what vestiges is? Like not a No, vestiges is what's left over. Parts that are left over. 
So he starts working at six o'clock at six years old. Taking care of Tommy was his name. I didn't even know the kid's name. But I know Tommy is the, he gets he starts working at six. Taking care of Tommy at 16. Now his life is he's born he's, he's born on one plantation. His mother lives on another plantation because they were split up. He's being raised by his grandmother. He gets lent out just like someone would lend out a horse. To go work in somebody else's field. He gets lent out to a number of different plantations as he's growing up from six to sixteen. At sixteen, because the important point the other sister raised was that one of the the story goes that he was taught by the wife of Mr. Auld, A-U-L-D was his name, who taught him to read. She did some starting. Douglas mainly learned to read by listening, learning, teaching himself. Self-determining. He was convinced, he was committed to learn as much as he could. And reading was critical to that. There's a quote from Douglas, once you learn to read, you will be forever free. And he learned that through his own experience as a young man. He set to a, to a, 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 a plantation, it wasn't even a plantation, it was a small farm, by a poor, for a poor farmer, but he was known as a slave breaker. Because like as his sister pointed out, Douglas knew that learned how to read. And not only did he learn how to read, but he took it as a responsibility to teach. Not just learn, but to teach other African children and adults, whoever, to learn. He ran a Sunday school in his, in his early years. So you don't have to be old and grown and gray like we are. As you learn, teach. Each one, teach one, should be a model. Something that drives us all the time. Right. Sleep. So the other, the other. While his, t his, his, the owner of the plantation that he lived on wasn't so concerned about it, although he wasn't too uh, hip on it either. Other plantation owners absolutely opposed teaching slaves how to read. Anybody got an idea why? You can't answer all the questions. <laughs> What's your little brother? What's your name? A chinge. A chinge. See, I was with my grandfather. Why? Why do you think slave masters wouldn't want slaves to learn how to read? Because they were slaves and they couldn't read because they were um, not allowed to do it. Right, they were not allowed to. Why weren't they allowed to, little sister? What's your name? I'm sorry. Who's not? You amongst you with family, friends, and those who love you. Chinene. Chinene? Why do you think the slave owners didn't want the slaves to learn how to read? Okay, the part of it. Little sister in the back. What's your name? Um, I can't hear you. Uh, Stand up. Speak uh, down in here. They learn about equality. They learn about somebody. Quick, go ahead. Why wouldn't slave masters want slaves to learn how to read? So that they would. So that. So that they would try and stop slavery when they didn't want slavery to stop. Absolutely. Go ahead. Um, and also in his autobiography, when um the wife, the Tom, the wife of Thomas All, he was um, she was teaching him how to read. Her, yeah, Douglas how to read. And then once Thomas All found out, he um, he kind of like admonished the wife for doing that because, and then he called, um, he said um that once you teach a slave how to read, there will be no keeping. Them. No more keeping them as a slave. Very good. Very good. Yeah, little sir. What's your name? What's your name? Chad. Chad? Come on, tell us. I couldn't hear it, but I heard power was in there. And I know that that's just power. Knowledge is power. That's right. Everybody repeat that. Knowledge is power. And Douglas spent his life gaining knowledge about the system that oppressed his people, about the people who were around him, about who were friends and who were enemies. And in fact, he went around the world and he got knowledge about struggles elsewhere. He supported the Irish people fighting against England. He supported English workers 
He went to England to get away from the Americans who were trying to reinstate him. But knowledge to achieve power to free himself and his people. If we don't learn anything else. That's why I think Frederick Douglass is a hero for one. Let me tell a little bit more of the story. 1838, he's 18 years old. Oh, I just want to tell a good part. At 16, he's linked out to this guy named Covey. It's the O-V-Y, who was known as a slave breaker. Those who try to learn how to read, those who won't accept being slaves, those who fight back need to be broken in order for the system of slavery to be maintained. This will to resist had to be broken. And the way it was broken was through brute force and violence. Smart old Frederick Douglass gets sent to Kobe to be broken. And on a regular basis, Kobe beat Frederick Douglass with a whip, with a lash, tore the skin from his back. At one point, Frederick Douglass said, enough is enough. What happened? Um, after he... Um he went to, he went back to the um, original masters. What happened before he gets back? What he, oh, what happened? Douglas fought back and beat Kobe's butt. Kobe never put a lash on him again. <laughs> never put a lash on him again. And right, then he went back. He went back, but Frederick Douglas was forever changed. He knew he opposed slavery, he hated being a slave, and he knew he would never accept being a slave. And that's how he spent the rest of his 78 years, fighting against slavery and all forms of oppression. That is why I think Frederick Douglass is a hero. And I'm honored to try to look like him. You know, the whole hair thing, if you look on the picture, they called him they called him the Lion of Anacostia. He was looked like a man. And I'm not up to Frederick Douglass' standing. He was 6'2". He was a strapping strong man. He had a deep, resounding voice. When he spoke, people listened. And that's why he first got on the historic stage as a speaker. Against first identifying for those who had not experienced it what the brutality and horror was of slavery. He told a story of how his aunt, in front of him as a child, for disobeying her, her master, was hauled up and tied to the door of a barn so that she was on her tippy toes and lashed until the ground was red with her blood. For disobeying, that's what slavery was. Total subjugation and oppression of those who were enslaved, the sons and daughters of Africa, our ancestors. He would never be a slave and he would always fight against the system of slavery. That's why Frederick Douglass is a hero and should be honored. And I'm honored to be here to give a, some presentation about it. But I like to flip the script a little bit. That you're celebrating the birthday of Frederick Douglass instead of you giving Frederick Douglass a gift, I had a gift for you. Where's the suit? You could help. I hope we have enough to go around. Maybe you can remember. But I will ask for a gift from all of you, and that is that you draw lessons from the life of Frederick Douglass. And first and foremost, appreciate education and work as hard as you can to learn as much as you can to improve yourself, your community, your people, and fight against those vestiges of slavery that still exist today. And when you walk outside and you, and you see bad conditions, and you see police brutality, and you see poverty and unemployment, those are the vestiges of slavery. When you see three or four of people, young men out of your neighborhood who go away, and you don't know what away is? Those are the vestiges of slavery. 
So the struggle against those vestiges continues today. Douglas would have been in the forefront because he was in the forefront of the struggle, as Baba Zaid told us, in the 19th century. And we went through heroes and sheroes and warriors for freedom of the 20th century. And we trying to work to help prepare y'all to be the sheroes and heroes and warriors for freedom of the 21st century. Frederick Douglass, thank you. Frederick Douglass says something to us. And he says, it's easy to build strong children than to repair broken men. Mm. That deep or what? So with our help, but mainly with your help, with your own efforts, you got to be the strong folks for the 21st century as opposed to the broken men. Back to 